was, dude, I was just like, I think it's in my Twitter draft. So I was just saying the other day, like, if you if you have anything to say that's like this song is not that good, you should already have made a song that's in the style and better. Exactly. Like what you think they could have done with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You should have already made that song. If you can't do that and then prove it, like then you know, that 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 opinion needs to be out of the narrative of how we consume music as a culture. Exactly. I don't feel that like if I don't like something, I'm not gonna be like, what don't I like about this? I'm just like, I don't like it. Let me go find something I like. Like why would I sit there and like like rack my brain over what I don't enjoy? Like it's just dumb. It just doesn't make sense to me. And that's why because I went to journalism school for like a year up in um up by Pittsburgh at a little <coughs> little school up there, but like. I, I fucking, I hated it. I, I dropped out after a year. I was like, this is ass. Like, these people are just so, in, like, they would just change my words up and put my name on it. I'm like, bro, I didn't say this. And they're like, no, but it's, yeah. it, it goes into the and theme of like, the magazine. I'm like, shut up. What does that mean? Like, it's an entitled uh, sentiment that kind of, like, is driven by exactly what you just said, where it's like, but you're in a magazine. Like, there's some sort of, like, ultimatum of prestige there like you 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 made it to a magazine and now you can make it to another magazine and and i mean that is how that 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 sector works much like everything else but it's like if you are a wholesome person it doesn't it that doesn't resonate with you you know what i mean because it's not about the money right it's not about making making the exorbitant amount of like like what wall street journal money you know or complex money yeah it's like doing your craft with respect to yourself and like i think that 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 shows in what you do and it's like you i mean you just said you dropped out you know what i mean like well and that's that's where like um what's his name uh the dude that did the kentucky derby um hunter S- no not it was it hunter S. thompson oh yeah well the he, journalist. yeah the gondo journalism style yeah well he did uh, yeah yeah and it's like, I don't think you find that through academia. You feel me? No, you can only find so much through journalism school. Like, literally, one of my teachers is just like, if you know what you want to do within journalism, you should not be here right now. And I was like, right, you yeah. do it. Exactly. That, exactly. And that's what university kind of, like, I appreciated university because it was like, I see what I want to do and university has helped me actualize that I don't want to do something else with that. And I just needed to do something. You know what I mean? I needed to actually put pen to paper on the ideas I was having and then put to, put to path, path. You know what I mean? Right. I, I, I couldn't just sit here and fucking, oh, this would be cool, that would be cool, but like, how do I do it? So let me go to school for it. You know? Yeah. It's just, that's not how the world works. And, and especially not in 2021. It's like every job that you enter, the the uh, the necessity for specification. What do you do that kind of separates you from any other person on this fucking planet that could do the same job that you're doing with a couple of months of basic training? Right. No, yeah, that's what I'm like. Um, because I tried because I ended up going to school in Florida for music business, but like that was a huge. It was like a private school. They were, didn't really know what they were doing. It was a weird. It was weird. It was <laughs> to say the least. It was a weird experience because there were kids down there. I was like, "Well, what do you want to do in music?" They're like, "I want to own a sports team," and I'm like, "What? What does that have to do with anything we're learning right now?" I was like, "Why would you come down here to study music business if you want to own like the New York Jets?" Like, it just didn't make sense. I mean, that, dude, this world is rife with that. You just have too many people trying to fucking enter a system without a plan mm-hmm. and then expect to get exactly what they want from it. And they don't have any, like, I don't know, people dream way too big. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's looking at the Kardashians and expecting to be able to attain that. You know, or, or whatever you want to call it, keeping up with the Joneses, fucking, uh, it, it's just this, this fast fashion <clears throat> type beat take on the society. And it's just really, really weird. But either way, yeah. Uh, we can, bruh, I mean, if you're down to just, like, talk like this, I'm down with that. I'll tangent off, but if you had, like, actual interview questions, start shooting, because I just, like, bro, conversation just goes with me, you know? I feel you. No, that's what I'm saying. I didn't want to, you know, I do have, like, a couple questions down, but this is, what we were doing was great, because, I mean, eventually I'm going to have yeah. to end up, what they do, they, 
they don't do the videos, they transcribe it, you know what I mean? So I'll just have to, like, yeah, yeah. re-listen to this and type up what we're talking about, but we can keep all that on. Cool. Yeah, 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 but, um... Yeah, yeah, no, I, bro, exactly, because, I mean, that's, that's what I, I, pre- like, I really appreciate this about, like, how you're coming out the gate. Like, it's, it's not every day you find an interviewer that is treating it like a conversation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the times it comes down to a pre-programmed like script that you could find the same fucking 12 questions in every, no, no, not every there. I'm not saying there's no good interviewers. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, 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 it takes more than, knowing what interviews were like in Rolling Stones in the 70s. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it, this Again, this world is too ripe with specificity to be able to be like, and what brought you making music? When did you start making music? Nobody gives a fuck, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I know exactly like, what you mean. It, it's, it's, uh, this dude, uh, King Vision Ultra, um, I don't know if you're familiar with his work. He produced the... Um, Amani's album, An Unknown Infinite. Okay. That came, uh, if you haven't tapped into that, that's one of my favorite albums. Yeah, uh, I don't think I'm familiar, period. honestly. You're going to have to like link me with that. I don't think I know it. Yeah, that that's, um, so they're very, that's a very inspirational album to me on several levels. First off, that's like, uh, I, I know Amani is very, I don't know if, I, I'm pretty sure Gang or um, King Vision Ultra. He's also very, very like anti-streaming. Mm-hmm. So it's like a Bandcamp exclusive, which was like super powerful to me. Just like just seeing that be a successful album in its own right without streaming, without label money, without and, and it's bro, it's a beautiful testament to hip hop and especially like. You see, I see this term thrown around, low ni or L O hyphen N Y, talking about like New York style lo fi, and I fucking it, it's just so wild to me. Like I don't think I, people I, I, really sounds, know what lo fi means. I don't think they know like the actual definition. I mean, lo right and low fidelity, right? It makes sense when you're talking about some of the sample work, like you talked about, but. But at the same time, it's not, that's not what's floating the music. And if that's what's floating the music for you, you need to fucking listen more. It's not These a genre. people are like, you're, you're not, I mean, it might be, but like, I, I feel like when you start talking about lo fi, it always refers to the beats. Mm-hmm. It's always referring to the beats. And like, if what you're listening to this, this wave of m- music, I, I, I don't want to call it, Hip hop because the album that Pink Seafood released last year, not not the Fly Seafood stuff, um, the solo album that he dropped. Yeah, the one the, he, with the uh, painting of the cover. Yes, yes. Like that album is kind of to me a testament. Sit down. A testament to like what this wave of hip hop or music stands for. That's why I don't want to call it hip hop because it's like so not hip hop that album. Oh, and no. that is like an integral piece of this movement. Another one, uh, Red Burns by Standing in the Corner. Yes, yeah. That yeah. album, that that album is such a testament to what is happening here. Um, Mike, may God bless your hustle. Um, uh, I'll leave, Kia, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the and and, and none, none of that is really truly hip hop. It's it's being. I, I want to say self conscious. There's self, just a, like aware of one's potential and truly living with the power of individualism. I hear art rap thrown around, and I think that's a fucking weird term too. Yeah. Um, uh, I just I don't I, I I don't understand this this urge to bottle it into something, especially now when it's just like let the person be their own brand. Mm-hmm. You're, when you're listening to Pink Sifu, listen to Pink Sifu. You know, like, uh, like, uh, why does it have to be something else? Yeah, it's the comparisons is, 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 that really, that really, it's because I literally got into arguments with kids in school about this. Where I was just like, do we really need genres anymore? Like, I understand, right, like, the I mean, need like, to it's, like 
label it, I guess. But at the same time, like, I feel like John was a, such an outdated way to label it just because of yes. the internet. How, and how, how diverse music has become. Exactly. I mean, music is just diversified to a, to a degree that you could only imagine with the, with the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And that and that opens the door for people to fill it with whatever the fuck they want. And you get things like, I, I don't know, I mean... It's not even like this is normalized deviance from conventionalism at this point, but right. uh, Death Grips. Right. Death Grips is like, you know, like, and that's not even that weird. Arca, it's not even that weird. Delroy Edwards, not even all that fucking weird. No. Uh, and if you want to fucking talk about lo fi, Delroy Edwards is fucking lo fi. Exactly. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that lo fi, some of Dean Blunt stuff. I don't understand what, because, like, yo, a lot of it's like, Especially when people talk about Earl's fucking, like, some rap songs as, as lo-fi. I'm like, dude, that dude was not, that's not lo-fi. Exactly. That's label money. That's label money. He probably had, like, somewhere close to six figures to work on that fucking album. Of course. And he didn't do it lo-fi. And I'm not saying that because you have money, you can't do things with low fidelity. But it's just like... And I feel like a lot of the, I, I honestly, I can't say this with much, like, like, like exact, like, but I have a good amount of hunches that a lot of the fucking quote unquote lo-fi elements to his voice were all done in post. Right. Oh. Like, uh, I, and, and if there weren't, it was on the song standing on the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of, the mixing was a huge part of that album. The mixing and mastering played a huge part in some way. Yeah. And I mean, like, as it showed in any given album. Sure, of course. But, like, it, into playing into that lo-fi mindset. And I feel like it's, a, like, sometimes it's pervade. And I don't want to say too much on this just because it's, like, doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Right. But, like, I feel like you can tell when people just embrace the fact that, oh, this is what y'all want to see me as. Mm -hmm. And, like, I really appreciate, especially, like, so, like, a lucid Billy Woods, both of them, I've never seen them like allow like boxing in. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like that like them uh them Deem Spencer, like that that dude oh man. Deem is crazy. Ah, he's, ah, the man. he's uh he is the man. Uh, he, uh, so like it's wild. I I remember like I, I like it. Three years ago, something like that, I got a tattoo of, on my chest based off of some of his lyrics from We Think We Alone. Okay. And then, and just because that album was fucking crazy to me. And then, um, I remember sometime, uh, probably two years ago, two years ago, um, yeah, on my birthday two years ago. I remember, I remember my fucking my friend Keandre was saying like happy birthday to me and I looked at his page and said Dean Spencer was following him and I was like bro how do you Dean what yeah and I'm like I literally have a tattoo of this man and then and then he fucking he's like um oh no that's like my boy I went to high school with him I was like yo put him on to like my art because it's like that's the main thing I do in my opinion I don't even look at like the music as like the main thing I do right. Okay, so you uh, really that, see that, yourself that, as like a visual artist before like an actual before a, um not actual I mean, artist. bro, when you want to when you want to talk about time spent, I, I spend most of my day working on graphic design. Okay, I like I, on any given day. Like I'll sit down, bro. I'll write a verse in like twenty minutes, and then I'll be like, "All right, let's go." You know, like yeah. it, 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 like because I don't, I'm not, I'm not forcing myself to write. Like, when I do write, that's why this album took two and a half, three years, something like that. Because um, I wasn't ready to write at any given moment. I had to find it. I had to, like, you know, live. Fucking experience time and self before I tried to channel something intimate into right. this world, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, like... <clears throat> that's what I try to tell, the, like, the, the, the kids around me who make music. They're just like, well, I'm not inspired and i'm like look go outside go for a walk like try something new like you're not gonna it's literally that easy like going for a walk mm -hmm. you cannot control what happens you could barely control what happens within the confines of your home as soon as you open that front fucking door the world opens itself to you mm -hmm. you know and like it's it's embracing that community around you not not and i'm not talking about the fictional idea 
of a community that's kind of like reminiscent of this nuclear family that we're trying to break away from. Right. But like the idea of like that, I remember uh, that show Weeds. Um, the the intro they had where it was like talking about like little boxes all made of ticky tacky and they all look the same or something like that. Okay. And it's just like that. It's just this idea of this structured community that that that. And, and uh, it has its digital incarnation, for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's like uh, people romanticize something that doesn't actually exist around them, is what I'm getting at. I feel and that, yeah. You, you, you try and live in a world, you try and go out and enter, like, when I moved to Buffalo, I, I saw myself doing it. Um, where it was like, I, I, I moved from Poughkeepsie. And, like, seeing seeing how the, 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 the just the, the, the diaspora, even within two different, subcultures of new york changes and i mean that 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 goes even stronger in like new york city you have like such a small plot of land and it has so many plots going on within it in in terms of like cinematic plot um like (laughs) within each of the boroughs and even within each of the boroughs there are towns that have their own thing going like i know bed has an entire like you know aesthetic developed it's and like i don't know that's just wild but it's, like it's uh, kind of the same in being Florida, able like, to, once you go like there's like philly and then there's pittsburgh and then in between it is yeah. like amish and like you know what i mean so like driving <laughs> through there is like insane because you see like yeah the lifestyle i live down here and then you drive like <laughs> two hours up the road and there's people who don't have electricity and i'm like this is crazy up here like these people are just like right hanging out with horses i'm like this is nuts but it's like at the same time if you were to enter that Amish community in the way that you were just describing it, right where it's just like whoa these people don't even have electricity you 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 miss out on experience experiencing the microcosm of culture that exists there of course outside, that, that's that's more specific than amish itself you know what i mean exactly like, no i know what you mean there's so there's this there's this term and they use in wine development called terroir t-e-r-r-o-i-r okay um and like it's talking about like the specific bacteria that are in the like the ground and like other like, microbes and little things like that in the soils within certain regions of France, which is why you have things like Champagne only being from the Champagne region. Because, like, there's something about the soil there that affects the grapes in their development in a a substantial enough way to where it means something in the taste, and you can't recreate it. Right. There's, it's just this idea of microbial terroir, right? And uh, the, the... charcuterie community kind of taps into it too in terms of just because like when you have when you're curing like a salami in portland mm-hmm. or whatever you're curing right there are different aerial microbes than in new york and you cannot produce the same so just by just and, and there's there's not enough like human control that's cost efficient in terms of food consumption that would allow you to make the same uh, salami in new york it's right. just not. It's just not practical, right? And that's the beauty of it, right? And I think the same goes with music. You know, there, yeah. there are there are certain things that can breed, um, certain things. You know, and, and I think it doesn't need to be more complex than that. Like, yeah. So, are you a big believer of um, someone being a product of their environment, like the the area they're raised in and the things around them really affect who they eventually become as a person? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like, you're only one step farther from being a baby every single day. And, like, at that point when you're a baby, you were the dumbest thing on the planet. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, you didn't know shit. And you just, you know, Mm -hmm. you were thrust into life and then you figured it out. And then you were just, like, kept on, you know, ambulating without a fucking cause for some time. And then it's just, like, eventually you become a young adult and you're still emulating your parents subconsciously, the people around you because of trends and everything like that. You're constantly emulating Mm -hmm. always. And and that's why I think it's the the, the smartest thing to do is to diversify your experience. Like 
And look, because it's a passive thing. When you learn language, you're not cognizant of what language is at that point. Mm -hmm. When you're learning your native language, you don't know what the fuck is going on, right? And, but, but people are just always talking around you. And you're just picking up phones, like little fucking, just the little fragments of speech, like the, the, the letter F, the part of it, where it's just like, you're just picking that up and you're like literally just st statistically taking into account what, how, like how often those show up. And that's like why, like you hear like the Japanese culture have trouble with like the letter L because it just never shows up, uh, naturally in their language exactly. that phone is not in their language so their mouth shape doesn't they, like they just don't learn that mouth shape and it's weird for them and we have problems with like vietnamese letters like ng no right even yeah. though it's so in it, it's so present in our language in terms of every single act like present tense action verb like i'm running right mm -hmm. that 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 phone is there but we just don't get it outside of that context you, you ask someone to say that the that, that that traditional Vietnamese last name, N G Y U E N, right? Wine, right? Mm. And people just have no idea what the fuck is going on. Uh, yeah. Because it's learned. It's learned, though. Mm -hmm. and, and, a lot of, and, and there is a lot of cripping in terms of, uh, well, I, I don't remember exactly what the term is phonetically, but um, that, like, when you are dropping, that's what it's called. Like, uh, that the G is a lot of the time it's off, I can run it killing you know like when yeah, you just yeah, end yeah. at the end you know because it's easier it's more compatible with our with the american palette um uh but either way um the, what i'm getting at is just like you like you as an individual you have your own language to deal with you mm -hmm. know like you have to learn that language first before you can share what you're saying with the world. You know what I mean? Like, right. I can't fucking... And that's why I think that the the visual art that I do is so important to me. Because it's like, until I had that, I have no idea. Because I've been making music for 10 years, dude. I've been rapping for 7, 8, 9 years. I, I like... I, I didn't know what the fuck to do with my hands. Like, yeah, when you were and rapping, it's just that, it's just like I and, and and I mean that on like like that that scene in Ricky uh, in Tired of Nights where Ricky Bobby is just kind of like sitting there and wins his first face. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> it's just like I, I don't know, bro. Like like the, this rapping stuff is cool, but like everyone can rap, dude. What mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not even and I'm not even saying what I feel like I want to say because I have, like, I don't know. And and doing collage really opened up that world of like daily art to me. Like, I couldn't rap every day, you know what I mean? It wouldn't right. be good. Like, and so, like, having something to just channel the ideas that are too abstract for words, right? Like, because okay. I feel like a lot of idea, just the, 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 the what is it called? The um, phenomenon of an idea, right? A lot of the times that is too abstract to speak. And you have to figure out how to say it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you're talking about like the the the, the rarest idea you had for like a creative project, how the fuck are you going to explain that to someone? That's half of the part the part of like project development is figuring out how to even communicate the idea that you're having to someone else. Right. And that just comes in like time with incubation, right? Like that just comes with the incubation of the product itself, and like. Mm. Where, where was I getting? Um. Too many tangents, dude. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. but, um, it's interesting you brought up uh, collage style, because when I was doing the write-up for the album, I mentioned how it was very collage-like, the way you make music, too, because it was just kind of, for lack of better terms, I want to say mishmash, because it's a very cohesive project, but sort of just like, just boiling pot of just, you know, different beats you would do use an auto tune on some songs and it was really interesting how so do you think the way you make uh graphic design or make uh draw and everything like that by the way did you draw the album cover no no that was uh i gotta give big love to jamadi on that one okay he is he's like 18 19 he makes music and he just he just started posting i don't know how long he's been drawing but i'm pretty sure he just started posting like in September, October, something like that. 
dude just like killed it. There and the, like, there's a lot of art that I haven't really released yet that mm-hmm. he's done um, for the album. That's that's just fucking fantastic. Yeah, and like I don't know, he he really catch and and kind of on the point of like the incubation chamber. Like I don't know, it sent me like like I got the secret feature on the album almost two years ago something like that oh, you know really? what i mean wow okay yeah and it's like and it's like i sat on it so fucking long i i sat on it so long that i i ran into him at young world and he was like hey yo when you dropping that song or no i i, I and he didn't ask that he didn't ask that I, I said to him, I'm dropping that song soon. He was like, yeah, bro, it's been a fucking minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, like, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, yeah, 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 it's coming out soon. And that was um, a little over a year ago at that when I when I saw him. Right. And so it was just like, dude, like, uh, <laughs> but I needed that long. You know what I mean? Like, if I didn't take the time, I think it wouldn't be what it is. And, I, exactly. and it's not perfect. Those were my best takes of the, of the songs. But, like, that's not the, the the life I fucking live. You know what I mean? Exactly. I can't romanticize someone else's album process. Just because I see other artists making albums in studios with the highest quality microphones out there, this, that, the third. I don't have access to that, and I don't care to spend the time and money to get access to that. Exactly. I have a old performance mic with a sock over it, and that's good enough for me. That's all you and need. And it's like, I, I, right. And, and, and if, like, if that's not good enough for you, then it, it's like at the end of the day, I really think anyone off a label is this. This is what you do without money. This is this is what you have available to do at like at your rawest potential. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And what can you do with that? And if you can't make a fucking Shora SM58 with a fucking sock over it work, then I don't think you're like what what do you need what do you need anything else for? If you can't fucking make Ableton stock plugins work, why are you downloading VSTs? Mm-hmm. No, you're exactly You right. know what I mean? And it's like like, bro, back on Deem for a second. But like me and Deem you could say that me and Deem worked on something. Okay. And it was just like anything that I touched on that was entirely uh, Ableton stock plugins. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was just like, I, I, I still never downloaded a VST. And it's like, no, it's not like great conventional. But, but and I see, I can see Demon the, uh, over uh, on the FaceTime screen right now saying like, bro, shut up. You're like, yeah, like you're good at this you know what i yeah, mean yeah yeah like, yeah because it's like i always do this to myself but i'm like they're not great you know what i mean but it's not really like like what you would expect Dean to be rapping but it's like dude the songs are crazy right and like uh, and, and it was just wild because it was like i didn't know him and then out, out of nowhere i'm like i had sent him a couple beats here and there and out of nowhere i'm on an instagram live one day and um, someone asked him a question because it was his Instagram live and he was doing the Q&A thing and someone asked him like who are your favorite producers and he goes Dean Spencer Man. and I'm like Yo, you're funny as fuck <laughs> I love that I love that and then he goes nah but for real the only producer I really do an album with right now is Big Flowers and I'm like wow. what? 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 that's crazy I to hear you like like someone you look up to like that like you got his lyrics tatted on you when you're saying that shit that's insane that's, i can't I, I can only say that about two lyricists three three one of them is my best friend in the entire world son he produced uh the song with sifu on it and he did the vocal engineering on the entire the album okay um and it was like just in terms of i think like Getting credit to consultation sources is huge. I ask him about damn near everything that goes into my music. The, everything that goes into my, like, and it's not because I don't think I can, I have the, it's just like, that's like my ride or die 
to the grave, homie. If I you need we someone like that when you're about. creating anything, though. You need someone yeah. who is going to be honest with you. And not yes. be honest, but, like, you know, who you can reach out to on a wimp's notice. Like, I just made this. Can you, what do you think about it? You know what I mean? Like, that's a exactly. huge part of a creative process. Exactly. And that motherfucker is not always hitting me back right away in the timeline either. But it's, like, that's, like, enough. You know, I, I, I don't need that from him. You know what I Having mean? Having that it's outlet like, is enough. It, like, you know what I mean? Right. Exactly. What was I talking about? Oh, he did the vocal engineering. Wait, but why was I talking about him, bro? Why was I talking about um, him? You're talking about um, the three lyricists that you could say. Um, I don't know if it was that you had tatted on you or you were talking about. Uh... Oh, yes. Yep. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, he, his band, they have a quote, looking forward to reaching back. I have like a street sign on my forearm that's inspired by those lyrics. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I have four. I have an old. The first tattoo I ever got when I was, like, 16, it was, like, Streetlight Manifesto, that old ska band. Okay. They're, like, yeah, they, they, that's the only one I have, like, the actual lyrics tatted on me. But, um, yeah, that one sucks, and I try not to talk about it. <laughs> um, leave it in there, though. Um, another, the other one, Dean Spencer, the... Uh, it's like um, a fig leaf and two hands coming out. One's holding a ten dollar bill. One's holding a one dollar bill. Mm -hmm. And it's like the inspired by lyrics from East Cities, where he was talking about, um, "I want to come back as a small leaf on a fig tree covering East Cities." So I took the fig fig leaf, and then later in the song, he's talking about this experience where he got held up for, I think the the, the headphones he was wearing, his, his wallet, some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And um, the lyric he had put down was. Um, I got like eleven dollars in my pocket. Whoever gets to me first could get it, and it's like that. That was like so meaningful to me. Just like, bruh, <laughs> yeah. I do not care about the material possessions that I rock this life with. And it was just like, to me, it was Dean. Dean was important enough for me in my own process because he, to me, normalized in a huge way. Normalized being emotional. Normalized okay. being, both, not not just emotional because I think that had been going on for a while, but I think the novel engine that he brought to it was just like vulnerable. Yeah, you just know for what the I mean? brutal honesty, like not holding anything. Yeah, back. yeah. I, I, like I can't listen to "We Think We Alone" without crying multiple times. It's just like, right. and I think that he did it on purpose. He's a motherfucker for it. <laughs> like I, 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 I'm tight about it. Like that, it, it, it's it, he's that raw, he's that honest, and it comes through. And I just needed to get some sort of, and I've never done it for any other rapper. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and then the other one is Fleet Foxes, um, "Sunlight Over Me, No Matter What I Do." Yeah. And it was just like, like the design that I like, I, I came up with a design for it where it was like um, uh, sun, and then a division line underneath it, and then a person. Okay. So, like a stick figure, you know what I mean? It's like super minimal, um, but like sunlight over me. And that's just like that eternal division statement. That's just like a mathematic thing. It just exists eternally. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but yeah, no, that, that that's one of the, that's probably the best folk album I've ever heard. Helplessness Blues by Fleet Foxes. That, that shit is a world. That shit's incredible. Oh, uh, yeah. King Vision Old Thing. I, I mentioned him before, but didn't get to the point I was bringing up. He talked about world building. Okay. Um, and I think that's like super, super important concept in moving forward as yourself. Um, as I'm talking about tattoos of other people's lyrics, that's mad funny. Um, <laughs> but but at the same time, I think I mentioned you know like paying paying respect to where the inspiration came from. You gotta. I you, feel that. Yeah, I, I, there was a bar off the album where uh, from Two Winded to Run. Uh, I said, um, cut ties, losses, and checks to where the inspiration came from. The shit ain't lonely or dangerous if you know how to act. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody on this planet with the math that com with the math to write your own language for you. So get to the lab, figure it out. It's the best of the bag, but it's too windy to smoke. And then the 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 the, the, the concept kind of switches there, but like yeah, the, like that where it's just like you're not in this alone. As long as, like, you can be part of something. You know what I mean? If you're too in your head and narcissistic and just, like, right. 
You know, like people try to do everything. Just, people want to be the the guy who has the hand in every you know pod to doing this, to mixing, to making their own designs bro, and shit like that. I, and like that's bro, great I if you that can, person. but Trust not me. everyone can. I am that person, big time, bro. I'm like out here fucking. I, I try and do everything, but it was like embracing the fact that you don't need to, and it's okay to ask for help when you feel like you're lost or you're stuck, and you like. Cause like I was thinking about this earlier, bro. Like the only thing that like I don't have no label money, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like this rollout has been fucking cool. Like I'm doing a lot for this. Like I, but I don't have no fucking backing. This is just like what I do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to ask I, about like, the rollout actually, because the rollout has been it's been super consistent, and I'm a big like. I went to school so I can help plan, like, rollouts. Like, that's what I wanted to do going into, like, music business school is, like, come up with cool. a motion and shit like that. So how important yeah, do you I think mean, that is to, like, an album release? And do you think it affects, like, the listener in any way when you're, when you're rolling it out, like, so consistently with consistent artwork and it's all, you know, in the same vein of design and everything like that? I mean, I won't say, like, on, on the level of how I'm doing it. I'll just talk about it um, on the meta Okay. The, the philosophy of rollouts um like i'll mention it but like i just don't like making like uh, ultimate personal statements mm-hmm. um especially not value statements um but like i think that like we were saying earlier anyone everyone can rap mm-hmm. a- a- everyone can fucking write a 16 if they need to you know and it can be, it would probably be pretty hot. Anyone's got it. I remember I was reading this book one time. Uh, it was called Everything is Illuminated. And um, it was this book about, I don't even remember. But I remember there was this one quote where it said, everyone has at least one novel in them. And like, okay. there was something about this town where the library existed, but the only books they had were the ones that the villagers wrote. Every person wrote a book in their life. Wow. And they were all kept in this library. And it was this, like, beautiful metaphor. And, like, what it kind of meant to me was that anyone can anyone can do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everyone can rap. Everyone's got a 16 at least, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, what do you do that separates you? What's going on, G? Um, what separates you from the other person that's doing it next to you? Right. And the other 15 people that are doing it next to them. You know, mm-hmm. and not like that even fucking matters because if you're if you're not rapping to get the raps off, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. No. Like, like the imp- the impetus for your rap shouldn't be like, all right, how can we make this work on an aesthetic level? That's fucking weird. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think that in this, like, I think that's defeatist to the actual craft itself because it's it's always been therapy. You know, but. and it's like so. If you're not talking about what you need to get off, I don't think you're rapping for the right reason. Mm. I feel. Um, like. Yeah, and so it's but but like, ah, oh, fuck. What what were we talking about? My fault. Uh, fuck. I'm. I lost. <laughs> I lost where the conversation started to. Uh, we were talking mm. about. Rapping for the right reason. What what did that stem from? Um, you were talking about that. Oh, the rollout, the rollout, the rollout. The rollout. Okay. Bingo. All right, that, all right, boom. So it's like, but when you have something, when you brush the dirt off of it enough uh, of your own experience, you live life, you get inspired, and you do something with it, right? Mm-hmm. And then it gets time. I was talking to Eyes Wide Shut about this. One of the best lyricists that this time has. Uh, I, I like. He is he's outstanding. If you don't know his work, get in tune with it. Oh no, I'm very um, yeah, he's tight. He's insane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That that dude is fucking crazy. That uh, Memories Bleed is legendary. Mem- oh like, my god. Like that's Pepper, a beautiful Pe- piece of Pepper music. Pepper just talks Pepper talks about it like, uh, it's it's all right. Shut the fuck up. I'm saying this through the interview and I'm talking directly to Pepper Adams right now. I'm talking to Bennett Carroll. Bro, I'm putting your government net. <laughs> <laughs> that album is iconic, right? It's a beautiful. I listened to that the first time I yeah. heard that. My mind was absolutely blown. I was like, "Oh my god, man!" I was like, "This shit is it's fucking nuts. It's insane." Yeah, bro. I, I'm telling you. So, like, either way, motherfucking. I was talking to eyes, and I was like, 
just like because we were, we were we're working on something. I don't know what it materializes into if it's going to still represent anything that's like drafted out now. We have about like seventeen minutes of music okay. put together for it. Um, but he was talking about like concepts, this, that, the third, and I was like, bro. I, if you get too wrapped, and I'm not even trying to say it like I was trying to mentor him or little bro him, nothing like that. We were just talking, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like if you get caught up in aesthetic, it gets, it's interference, right? Like, bro, I never intended for this shit to be Big Smile when I started writing some of these songs. Like, like I remember Tifu said some shit. He said, it must be the bracelet, must be the teeth. And it's like, boom, teeth. It's there, it, 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 and and the, he he. The, this song was never supposed to be on Big Smile. It was supposed to come out as a single alongside another song, and the song was supposed to be called Diet. I could I could I could probably remember the fucking verse I had, but it was like it said something like about a diet, but. and um, but that didn't happen, and I just kept sitting on it, and then other songs happened, and then I was like, oh shit. Big smile. It was ba- it was based off of a collage I did where the smile was broken. This, that, the third. It's going to be one of the cassette designs for the album. Okay. Um, and like it, it uh, it, it just kind of formulated out of that. But there were little precursors of it, right? Like when C Three said teeth, and uh, I had written a verse that ended up on that song, but was written for an entirely other beat. And it just kind of worked that, that that's the verse where I said, where I was, uh, I keep on going and showing my teeth to the people who's lonely when I'm in the street. That was for a completely different song. Okay. Uh, it was supposed to be the intro to the album. Um, big smile. And, and, but that line came out, came around before I came up with the idea for big smile. And it's just like, the, the the idea will present itself to you if you're living with this music as therapy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, 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 if you're giving yourself to it, it'll give yourself back to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I know exactly. And and that's beautiful. And anything you do, fuck music. You know what I mean? If you're raw with what you do, it, you'll find that terroir, that that special breed of whatever creativity that will that just manifests itself in and in, because in, in, i don't think it's a uh i was special or i had something crazy to give anyone can fucking do this it's just a matter of committing to yourself mm-hmm. who are you you know what i mean and it's like if you don't know all the more reason to start you know mm-hmm. and it's not a matter of what you do it's how dedicated you are to it right um, and again, that just comes with finding it, but, and then back, but back to the rollout. So it's like, um, once like, I, I'm not even kidding. Like I'm doing this shit like a day or two in advance because it's like, I, I like, I know the rollout's important. Mm-hmm. I, I've been talking about this album for a while. I don't plan well. I wait till the last minute for everything. Um, I made a music video for it like a week ago. I'm going to drop it when I release it. I have Mylar, the, the, you know, the bags you buy butt in that the, 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 like the cookies or Zaza bags or whatever. I had, I I designed two, like uh, I designed a miracle dro and an orthozontix. You feel me? (laughs) Um, and I, am dropping those for the album. I'm doing like, like I, like a Chimazier did a fucking video review. Um, I had, my boy Pat was working on some shit. It's just like when you have the idea, you can start bringing other people. Once you start taking that raw form of the idea and you start refining it and you figure out a way to communicate it, mm-hmm. then you can bring other people in. You can go outside. You know what I mean? Exactly. But it's like it, before you do that, get to the fucking lab. But like, um, cause I really think that's the big problem with a lot of rollouts you didn't have enough to say in the beginning. The songs might be good, you know what I mean? But, like, what is the cohesive factor? What do you... Who are you? Can they... Like, I was learning about um, character design in fighting games. Um, And more specifically, Rivals of Aether. It's like a Smash... uh, It's a platform fighter, right? It's like derivative of Smash Melee, right? Okay. And um, it's pixel art, 
And so, and the Steam Workshop collaborated with them to allow people to make their own characters, make their own stages, and no, no strings attached. Like, if you can code it, you can do it. There's a gigantic, like a Ronald McDonald that is about like three times the stage, and one hit kills you. And like, that, it just exists, right? Yeah. There's, um, there's the Dwayne, which is like just a gif of this, this kid dancing. And it's only like three frames and it just goes on repeat. And it's the same thing. Every, every meme one, it kills you in one hit, right? Yeah. But there are people who actually take it seriously. And then you have every Smash character that's ever, ever existed directly to frame data. Wow. You have characters that never existed in Smash that people wanted in Smash so badly. Gino, uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, mm -hmm. um, Ryu Hayabusa, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Bomberman. Anything you can fucking, ex and even the ones that already existed, but with a refreshed uh, move set like Mario. Mario's had how many games since the original move set that his mo entire thing is based off of to this day? Right. And people have given him like a Odyssey move set. But what I'm getting at is the idle fate, the idle stance, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's about six to eight frames of character animation when you're not doing anything. It's usually shown, like, I know in some Street Fighter games, the idle stance is shown um, at the character select. So it's like, um, Ryu, Do you, you're familiar with Ryu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's like, kind of, like, like, just stanced up hard body, right? Yeah. Um, like, you know he's going to move to you act tactfully. He's going to break it down. He's very, like, contemplated just by the... You, and you know that by how he's standing. There's not a lot of movement going on in his idle stance. Mm -hmm. And then you see Ken. And he's on his feet, bouncing back and forth. You know what I mean? He's ready to fucking go, right? And and when you play them, their their move sets are, are very similar. But it's what, what you need to focus on with the characters that differs. And it's hands and feet. That, like, those two characters were testament to the mechanics of the game being light punch, medium punch, heavy punch, light kick, medium kick, heavy kick. How can you use these things and a couple special moves? And they have the same exact special moves to uh, old games. When you're talking about older games, they, they have some differences now. Yeah. But, like, um, I mean, for, for lack of uh, going way too into it, they have pretty much the same special moves. But it was, like... Ken's kicks were more integral to his combo game where Ryu's punches were. And and it was like, that was conveyed to you without any words, just by the six frames, one-tenth of a second of how they were standing. Right. You know what I mean? And if you can't convey that with one post, with the thing that's going to just like be scroll past, if you can't make someone stop scrolling, you don't, it's not ready. Right. Unless you don't care. And in which case, that's that's the musician I really fuck with. The person that doesn't give a fuck. They just keep dropping it. Keenan Omari. That dude couldn't be bothered to fucking like, do a trick. Like, uh, 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 like, uh, like and, and I don't mean to downplay what he does. Because he is a genius. That dude is fucking incredible. Who's this? That dude understands music. Keenan Omari. So he's produced a lot of stuff for Masai. He was doing um wind instruments for the kia's and guitar for kia's um tiny desk uh show oh, okay. he um he's he is one like and and the, the dude puts out a uh uh beat tape or an album or something every fucking week jesus every week dude this dude is he grinds music so hard i mean he has he must have over 150 releases on his band camp oh my god and the dude is like 25 26 something like that jeez man and that's and, and, and you don't know that and, and like dude that dude is one of the most important people in that fucking lo hyphen ny the, the like the the whatever people are talking about the the archetypes of that being like slums 10k right mm -hmm. anytime someone's referencing that keenan is a huge part of that what what goes on there because he's humble yeah. that's why you don't know about him. that's why you don't know about that that's why that's why a lot of people don't know about jody as much in that fear right mm -hmm. people who are consuming slums music today 
don't know about Jody because Jody doesn't make Slums music anymore. Jody makes Jody music. Right. And it's beautiful because it's like he like I, he was there. He, he he helped make that, and he didn't like. And and, and, and I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get too into that either because then I'm going to start talking shit about like Earl or something. <laughs> and I don't. I don't have any jurisdiction to talk shit about Earl. But I just think that people are dick riding the wrong people when it comes to that scene. A hundred percent. And that's no, all I'm going to say on it. That's all I'm going to say on it. I'm. I'm. I know where you're going with it. I'm. I'm on your way. Are you familiar with um all Stevie Moore? No, I can't say I am. Um, he, so he's like, quote unquote, the godfather of like home recording. And it goes in the same vein of what you're talking about. Where like a lot, like at one point. Oh, he, oh, oh, he did that song, um, Pink Litmus Paper Shirt. I believe so. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's yeah, like, he I has like 200 albums released since like yes, the 70s. You yes. know what I mean? Like, I know who you're talking about. R. Stevie Moore. Yes. Yeah, he's insane. Because he did, oh, the, it's insane dude. what he did like early on with the R. Stevie Moore cassette club. Because he just, he didn't have a label. All he had was his instruments at his house and he would record like individual cassettes and there would be like 50 people signed up and you would have their names and addresses and he would just send out these albums like once a month, once a week. Like, however many he can record. Mm. He'll just record songs and, like, record them to cassette and then ship them out in, like, the 70s. And it's, like, just this insane thought that, like, he was really, like... What you're talking mm. about, he just did not give a shit. He, all he did was record songs, put them on tapes, and send them to the people who gave a shit. And then they would send them back, like, $10, maybe. And that's it. That's all he did for, like, his entire life. Whoa. It's unbelievable. It's an insane... It's just such an early on, like, especially in the 70s. Like, he was, like, they didn't have, like, yeah. Hamilton. He was just recording shit to cassette. And, like, all he had was his piano, guitar, and bass. And that's it. In his house. And he would get kicked out of, like, from place to place because he couldn't pay rent. Because all he was doing was recording songs. He didn't have a job. All he did was record Damn, songs. Damn, I'm about to dive. I'm about to dive, bro. I need, a, I need every, like, oh, man, I'm listening all day. It's, it, no, it's insane. His, um, what's his debut called? Hama, home, I, something like that. I forget the name of the bro, dude. Yeah, bro, I'm about to research this dude so hard. It's all good. You, you don't even need to take the time. Uh, I'm about to figure out everything about this man. He, no, he's insane. Um, I think all. I think, and it's even more insane because he's just been adapting over the years. So like everything he's ever released is on his Bandcamp now. Like he just had so many, like just this art, like files. Oh, it's over then. It's over then. It's, I'm probably gonna go buy his whole discography. It's insane. No, he's got like. God knows how many albums uploaded on there. And I think they're all on streaming, Amazing. too, which is nuts. Like, he's just been able to, like, Amazing. keep advancing and advancing. He's, 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 mm. he's, yeah, that reminds me of the, the, the cleaners from Venus. I don't know if you know about them. No. Oh, they, they, they have so much music. It's insane. They're like, um, I don't know if you ever heard Echo and the Bunnymen. They remind me of them a lot. Okay. Um, that kind of, like, who else, like, I guess um, who was like a very Tears for Fears was like the most popularized version of that style of music. I think, um, yeah, they they I don't know. It's like eighties kind of okay. So I don't want. I'm not gonna call it Cleaners from Venus Pop, but um, yeah, they were really cool. They just have so much music, and it's all just hitting streaming like in the last like five years. Like I, they I love have when that like happens when like a bunch 30, of 40 albums just like popping up on stream. And you're just like, I don't even know how to consume all this. Yeah, that's insane. A lot of the, um, it's great because a lot of the, because I've got real into researching like, um, what, uh, Japan was doing in like the 70s and 80s. They had a really cool, like, psychedelic mm. rock scene over there. The funk lot, wave, the funk wave, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of it is not on streaming, but that's why I love shit like Discogs. Dude, now I just no, have that, like a massive that, yeah. wish list. Dude, Discogs is the only way I can sample. Like, I can't, like, YouTube is fucked, streaming is fucked. Uh, you, 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 you have to use Discogs, and Wikipedia is fucked too. Mm -hmm. You're like, Wikipedia is good for finding a place to start on Discogs. Exactly, yeah. Like, exactly. yo. Oh, Discogs is great. I love Discogs. Um, do you but, collect but, records? Um, do you have like a big uh, vinyl collection at all? Yeah, I used to. I used to have a lot of records, but yeah. no, I don't have. I used to have like over two hundred records, but oh I don't God. anymore. Like I sold them all. Um, now I have about twelve cassettes, and they all mean something to me. Right. Um, I, I, bro, there was one. The the one that I like hold closest to heart um, is the Amani and King Vision Ultra. Is that that shit is great. I, I got a couple in there that I really like. 
Bro, that that shit is amazing. That an uh, Unknown Infinite was is probably like, um, I mean, it came, so it came out in 2020, so it's technically part of that 2020s decade. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be hard, bro. That's like that. That's good. That's like to me, that's the bar to top this this decade. Oh, wow. Um, it is it, 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 like that that idea of terroir that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so precipitated in their album. It's just like, yeah. ooh. but um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar. Uh, you gotta uh, link me. Man. You gotta send me some shit. That that shit is cool. My fault. Um, roll out. Yeah, just like keep 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 your eye on the prize early, um, mm-hmm. and it'll happen over time. Do a lot of things. Yeah. Um, dedicate to yourself. Don't 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 stress about whether or not other people are gonna think it's cool. If you don't think it's cool, nobody gives a fuck anyways. Um, and I don't know. I think that's it. Like, it, like, like in terms of like what I have, um, it, like you, and you also just have to be able to put in the work. You have to be able to do the things on your own. Um, yeah, exactly. Like as much as as much as we were talking about, like like going outside, getting other people involved. It, 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 that's with the understanding that you could do it on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to be able to roll this entire thing out on your own. And that's the only reason I have the Mylar bags. That's the only reason I have, like, a lot of the stuff that I have. Um, but if you're doing something that's worth a good presentation, mm-hmm. other people also, also other people are going to see that um, while you're working on it. I agree. Because you can't, you can't, you can't help but be around people. Um, and if you're doing something that deserves whatever like type of presentation you're not going to be able to hide it you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. it's like those two and when those two things interact other people are going to start like my boy dj um demetrius he does comics and there was just this one day where he was over and i was playing him a beat and he was like bro can you like make me some beats he's like cool and i was like yeah dude i'll just make some right now and so i wrapped up a package sent it to him that day and then i was like bro like you think i could like get a comic book cover <laughs> and he was like yeah bro i'm gonna make it right now and i mean he's still finishing it because these things are fucking crazy yeah. but it's just like it just happens you know what i mean like mm-hmm. and another thing is not being too triggered trigger happy you can't you can't post everything exactly like, no, i agree I I, I I i tweeted about the album so much like i was like working on big smile blah 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 big smile blah 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 but it's just like i don't know that's more so just normalizing the fact that i'm excited from the thing that i'm working on you know you it has it. nothing to do with the you know what i mean mm-hmm. but in terms of like content that i'm posting now i've had a lot of this stuff for months bro right um, a lot of it I'm making, like I made them both of the Mylar bags. I uh, designed, printed, and like manufactured and whatever. I bought Mylar bags and then I like, you know, printed labels, designed labels, whatever. I did all of that in like 12 hours, you know what I mean? The okay. last couple of days. Um, a lot of fucking work went into about 24 fucking bags, but it, it, it meant a lot to me. And like, but no, I was, you know what I mean? And it's like, it, 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 it's just a fermentation mm-hmm. and being able to extract it at the right time, you know, before it's been too long and while you're still excited about it. And that's a big thing, bro. You can't like, as much as I've sat on a lot of this stuff, like the secret feature, I've sat on the longest. Mm-hmm. As much as I've sat on a lot of this stuff, you can't sit on it for too long. Because otherwise it's just like, the flavors are too complex, they're too you. There needs to be something palatable and relatable if you're trying to bring it to it. And I mean, I can't even say that, bro. I can't even say that. Because something like um, Black Messiah by D'Angelo exists. And that's a product yeah. of 15 years of isolation, basically. Right. And like, but I mean, I guess you gotta just be like D'Angelo or something. I don't know. That's true, yeah. It's hard, it's hard to mimic what that man does. Because <laughs> that man's a, he's a fucking maniac. Yeah. But it's insane to think of it. It's what you're saying. It's insane to think about how he literally, like, from the law about it is that he pretty much just, I'm sure he did more, but it just sat in a room and learned to play guitar for, like, 15 years and then ended up recording, yeah. like, uh, Black Messiah, which is a beautiful, beautiful body of work. But it's what you're saying. Well, like, yeah. when it comes down That's- to it, all the promotion and shit is cool, but if you don't have, like, 
the songs to back it up and you don't have like what you're doing promotion wise does not make sense with the songs and it's just gonna it's not gonna work out the way you think it's gonna work out you need to have this but i I think i think even less importantly than the songs because it's like a lot of the times i hear people that are pressing an album and the songs are really good but something's missing Mm -hmm. and that's not a musical what's missing is not musical you know what i mean uh, I don't I, I don't know how to explain what's missing. Okay. It's something that exists on the meta level of your personality, you know? Okay. Like who, I understand. who the fuck are you and why are you speaking in the first place? Right. You know? Yeah. And like if you've spoken before, why are you speaking again? And I don't think the compulsory nature of saying I make music so I'm gonna continue making music, I don't think that's enough. In my opinion, I, just because I like, like I, I don't love this narrative of like what's next, but fuck you, this is my debut, but it might be my last album. I don't know, right. you know what I mean? And it's like, I because I don't like living compulsory, like by nature. It's 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 like just because you've written an article before, does that make you a journalist? Is it something you do every day? And it still does that make you a journalist? There are times when you're not journalisming, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, I, like, like, it's like, and when you stop, there's no guarantee that you're going to pick that pen up again. You could die on your way to the store. Exactly. No, it's you're like, exactly right. uh, 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 and that's why I avoid saying like I'm a collage artist or I'm a musician, this, that, the third. But either way, um. People get too caught up in labels yeah. anyway. People are so obsessed. Yeah. You know, I was talking about with genres. Yeah. People are so obsessed with being like, I'm a this, I'm a that. And I'm like, no, you're just a, you're just another person. So do, do what you leads, want. And if it's good, like, you know what I mean? And it leads right to that compulsory behavior of just releasing shit because you've done it before. And that's what other musicians you see do. Mm-hmm. You know? No, so I it's just like, I, mean. I, I, I think that, and that, missing piece always comes down to the hyperbolic time chamber how much time do you really spend with yourself when you alone are you wishing you weren't alone mm-hmm. you know like it, 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 if that doesn't add up like if there's if there's something missing within that equation like that you need to figure that out before you can go you know do whatever you yeah, need way. um i'm kind of exhausting myself from talking now flowers so like it's funny um when that so that name is like it's interesting right because like i didn't intend for it per se to be as personal as it is um in this current moment i live within that like i i like flowers by the michael by night you feel me like Mm -hmm. it's I, I like I have to for any of it to be true. Like, like you, you don't notice the little metaphors. Like, you don't notice the little like connections if you don't live within your own metaphor. Um, but yeah, so like with, with the flowers thing, like uh, originally I was collaging under six collage. Okay. Um, that was the Instagram page thing. And then I took in one time. Uh, I had a lot of flyers. And I made a beat on my phone sometime before that was called Big Big Flowers. And I was like, huh, I like that. I'm going to just go by Big Flowers. And that was my Instagram handle for a while. And I've been working on music this whole time. Never releasing anything. So, like, I think I'm spelling by lock, L O C K E. And, like, I never released anything on it. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just, like, what I was going to release in music under if I did. Um, and then when I went to go post the first song I ever posted, which was, I mean, it was three songs. It was this EP I did, Sixes, which is. The song six, the song six six. And yeah, song yeah, six, yeah. I know what you're six, talking six. about. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I did that, 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 I was originally planning on releasing that as lot, but then I was like, on my, I was tripping again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like on my Instagram, and I'm like, 
I should just I should just do because I like I had at that point my Instagram had gotten hacked. My main one, the one that I was going by, locked on me, and I just had the collage page, and I was like, "Well, that got deleted, so I might as well go." Ah, oh, I've never thought about that before. That's funny. It kind of tucked itself away from me. It was like, "Nah, you're big flyers now." Because <laughs> <laughs> I was still working the lock thing hard, and um, but yeah, no. So like, I just was like executive decision we're going about big flowers for music now too and then the metaphor started building you know mm-hmm. at that moment it was at that point i didn't have anything worth saying like truly sixes was like cool but like it, <laughs> oh, oh. And, I don't know. everything i've done is very until the metaphor kind of built itself like the first thing that i really think is like hallmark for me being big flowers, not going by big flowers, um, would be Bloom Cycle. Okay. Uh, that was the thing, the big sonic garden of love that happened a little bit beforehand was like leaning into it, but it was like I didn't do enough with it yet. It was just a bunch of sounds kind of like compiled together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I sold it as such. It was like it was a sample pack. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to make beats with it. And there were some cool beats. I know, um, I think it's Charles, that sounds, is just, that sounds, or, um, uh, and when he was going with Black by Black Pussy. I don't know, I remember. It might have not even been either of those people. Who knows? You know? Yeah. I really do not remember. <laughs> but, um, my oh boy, Zach made one, Dr. made one. Uh, yeah, they looked like it. It was cool. It was cool. Like, but I, I definitely didn't have time to do that when I was taking it. Uh, and it shows Bloom Cycle was like the first thing that I did so a lot of attention to that, like, and I had enough to as big flowers to be big flowers. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, Batman didn't happen overnight. You know what I mean? The character that you're portraying doesn't happen overnight. Right. And, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think big flowers it just needed a, a while for the, for, the, for the persona to form. And I'm not trying to say that it's not me. Because I am very myself, and I truly, and I, and I think I know myself well enough to say that. So I don't really like making those kind of statements, but I think that I am myself in my music, in my art. Um, I don't, but, yeah, because the writing on the um, on Big Smile is very. I mean, some of the songs are very vulnerable, very honest. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I think you the sentiment you're going with is it makes sense to me. Right, and it's and so it's just like what I'm getting at is like. Uh, how I can show it. Because a lot of that stuff is really personal. Right? But it's like I needed big flowers to be able to share that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? To be able to feel okay doing that, I needed to be able to have something that I felt like people even gave a shit about in the first place. Right. I don't know. Because cause it is about community. Like, this, this, I can't I can't stand it all. Like, I, I don't understand this. This, 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 uh, we're not getting into it. We're not going to get into it. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to sound cynical. But, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I needed the, the shoes to fill, you know? Okay. So you, do you... Does it, um, does it kind of go back what you were um, saying earlier in the earlier conversation we had? We're like, um, in order to... You were saying, like, because you do the graphic design, you make your own beats, and you write and all that, but for this project you only had like i think three three to four beats on there and you had someone else do the cover so where did that spirit of collaboration i guess come from or what what was was that a goal early on that you wanted you knew that you weren't gonna um be in every aspect of the album if that makes sense so my in my head when i first thought of it i didn't know there were going to be this many features uh, I didn't know I was going to have as little of a part in production. I think the original cut of the album, I have like eight songs. Okay. Um, but I truly, uh, so like, I heard it like, mainly off of party. Um, like, I think I even might have missed a note. What time is it? It's like uh, noon, 11.55. Oh, yeah. So in five minutes, right, um, Arm and Hammer and The Alchemist are going to, drop a promotional video that I made for their, their thing, right? 
Um, or, and, and, and like, I did one for small bills as well. And like, this, the, the stop motion scan. Uh, at least, uh, the, uh, one of his like, uh, that he did with the lasso. Um, and it's like, that's why I have the elusive feature. Like, it's not that I hit up the elusive, I paid him, and we stopped talking. Uh, we, we, been, like, I hit him up, I really appreciated his work, and I let just, I was like, yo, like, if you ever need something, I do stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and then we just had, like, it, it began an exchange. And I really appreciate the barter system for removing this kind of transactional nature to, the, the, from, um, human interaction. Okay. Right? Collaborating, true collaborating, because true collaboration doesn't happen in one project. It happens over a series of times, and there are there are, it's sinusoidal the way that things come back and connect. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Two sine waves that are out of phase with each other, and they just have intersecting points. And it's like that that that's true collaboration, right? But it's like in moments where you want something for your album, and you you gotta pay someone for it artwork because you don't do it yourself. Is that the, it's like you're entering a shop. You're buying something from Sephora, and then you walk out. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't know Sephora. Sephora doesn't exist. Yeah. And that extends like, psychologically to how we treat people once they are their own. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm following. So I think that collaboration was a huge part of it. I had worked with Jamadi, the dude that was creative director for the album um, as it is digital. Okay. Because um, I have anything physical, I'm doing a different cover for. Um, just because I think that a lot, like a lot of physical media is obsolete. Um, and a lot of the time it's collector's uh, value, not listening value. So therefore it should, it should provide something that doesn't, that exists completely unique to the physical entity. You know what I mean? I agree. I'm following. So, uh, but, um, I did like the whole project with Jumaati, that no good riddance conference. Mm-hmm. That's on my daily account. That he did all the raps on that, right? We had just like worked together and he was getting into drawing. I was like, yo, do you think that I that we could do something like for a big smile? We never thought it was going to be what it was, you know what I mean? But it ended up being what it was. And mm-hmm. then at that point, I was like, all right, you know, I'm just like you spread for this. This is sick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, like, I, I, like, he, like he's seen what I was doing. I seen what he was doing. And we just like, you know, started working together. And that's never going to stop. Right. You know what I mean? With a, with, with a lucid. Um, Excuse me. I've now done three projects with him. Uh, there was a flyer I did for an, the Arm & Hammer um, live stream event that they did during the pandemic in September. Um, off the front. They, they, they had a live stream performance. I mean, it wasn't all friends. I know uh, Elusa was doing a lot of stuff from his, or some, some stuff from his um, solo project that he had released that year as well. Okay. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I did a, the flyer for that, or one of the flyers for that. I met you, so um, then I did a stop motion and some promotional stuff and some prints for small bills. And I, now like, I did um, this project with the new Arm & Hammer project. Um, mm-hmm. or, um, the, um, the, the promotion that he had. He's working on something else for it, too. Um, and that, like, this is the open conversation. You know what I mean? That's, that's where it's just like, I don't know when, like, I, I don't think that that ends. Like, it, it, it's just a sinusoidal projection, a trajectory, if you will. You know and like Yeah, yeah, once you um, build that relationship, that's something that, you know, only so much can break. You know what I mean? Especially in uh, terms of collaboration and everything like that. And, and that's what the album is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's that's anyone anyone that's on the album. Um there are exceptions to that. Pink Sufu is an exception to that. Uh, I, I don't really know him. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's not my hope. That's someone that I paid 
to get a verse off of because I couldn't not do it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's just out here, like, like when he dropped Ensley, that meant something to the trajectory of hip hop. Truly. And, 100%. like, uh, I don't know, like, I just need, I just, like, it. and that dude, he's so great. Uh, I end up, I'm not saying this like I, like I know him in real life, like, and I have very few interactions with him. All of my understanding, the first one was I bought a shirt off of him, and I got a call as I was going to the passport day. And I was like, yo, who's this? And he's like, yo, it's Super. I was just seeing if he got a shirt. I was like, calling me and see if I got a shirt. I'm wearing it right now. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, I love it. Blah, blah, blah. But it was just like, he, he just called, told me your actual phone number. Mm-hmm. And you were just like, yeah, let me know. And so I was like, oh, I need a picture from you. Like, I don't even, I didn't even think I was going to be a rap, like, like, but just rap music still at that point. Mm-hmm. And, and I, but I was like, I need to do it. I, and I did it, you know what I mean? And it was just like, fuck, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was a while of, like, trying to find the peak after I paid it. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, because like, my head was like, you know, like, so it was weird. But, like, <laughs> he's an exception. I didn't hit him. Not an exception. Another person where it was just like, you just rocked that shit, dude. Yeah. Like, I feel like a lot of the muscle of what Slums was held on was Mike's lyricism on his production. And, like, I can't, I can't say anything that I'm saying musically without paying respect to Slums, the movement they did, uh, standing on the corner. Arthur, Frank Ocean, D'Angelo, so many fucking others. Mm-hmm. Um, the Hudson Valley Hard Pole scene. Uh, uh, fine. They still go by that. They've been seven other damn names. So blind. Um, wow. It's the age of apocalypse. Fucking, I feel like the, the, there's an entire scene there that's just like, oh my god, my Um, yeah, it's, that, that, the inspiration is endless, but right. like, that, that, that day was like the precipice of that type of production. And that's how you see it. Right. I mean, he's, he's, he's cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I paid him for that beat. And then, I mean, there's a couple of things that I threw bread for, but um, it was more so like, it's like opening the next day, but it's now, I mean, like, but yeah, I mean, all I'm getting at is that, like, the beats, uh, I, I, a lot of the times I would do album art for somebody and then get a beat for time. Like, um, the song Dentals with Lucid and Logi. Mm-hmm. That, that song, um, I've had that beat for fucking ever. Okay. <laughs> That's a, that beat has been around for a while. My boy Nadir made that beat. I made the album art for his project. We agreed that, that there was going to be some like three, four beats. He had been me some. I was like, that was the first one in the folder. And I hate picking the first thing out of anything because it's like, did I even listen? Yeah. The rest of them. But I heard it and immediately. I was like, boom. That, that, sir, officer, that post right there. You know, like yeah. that, um, uh, I, I, uh, fuck love. Um, I, um, I needed to, um, I needed that beat. Right. And the other two didn't come around for a fucking minute. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he also produced, um, there's a song off of this thing I dropped a m- month before this smile. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first song on there is Standing Menacing Me and Being Disappointed or something fucking, something along those lines. Okay. And he produced a beat on that. That, that, and it, but, but he sent me that. Like six months later, and then it's like an open conversation. Um, the thing just kind of manifested in that way. And I had, like, dude, I gotta have like 200 beats just like loaded up because it was like, dude doesn't really like have the money to throw for what I know I'm worth. Yeah. For, for collage, but he makes sick stuff too. Okay, I'm gonna just take the sick stuff. You know what I mean? Exactly. No, I feel you. Um, I, if I, like, I, if I'm not starving right now, 
I can I can be able to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. And um, I think I think that's important. The barter thing. It's just like eating, and it opens the door without having this terrible friends. Up to you. you continue to resonate with these people because mm-hmm. there's a sentiment that comes with it too. Both of you didn't have to take a loss. It breaks that capital uh, mindset of you both take loss to gain. Like, what, what is lost other than time? You know what I mean? And no, time right. is just constraint. You know what I mean? That that time is the thing that gives material value. It's what went into it, the labor. And labor is all derivative function of time. Mm. But, um, yeah. And there was just, like, a lot of work went into Big Flowers itself as a graphic entity. Uh that allowed it as a musical entity to really have what it has. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm not going to, like, like, there's a lot of people on this. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and all of them are legends in their own fucking right. You know? And, like, I, if I tried, bro, I couldn't buy, you could like, I, I do not have the means to buy that album. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so it's like, I just had to work for it. And, um, yeah, that's that's it. And it, it, it's funny because, like, I think, like you said, I have four. Nah, bro, there's two two songs that I produce. Okay, video, which I, I, I can only consider video one song, if it, and it's barely that, even though it's twelve minutes or however many fucking minutes it is. Yeah, um, it's more so a project, an experiment, if you will. It's those are songs that I just didn't have the capacity to do justice. On recording, or if I did, because I can't say I didn't. I had every opportunity to spend my money on recording equipment. Yeah. Um, better like to record guitar and bass and drums and this and that. Part. But I didn't do that. Mm. You know, I spent my money elsewhere, and we're not going to get into where I spent my money. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I spent my money elsewhere. Yeah. And but those songs still like there's still big smile themed lyrics on those songs mm-hmm. they're from the time that this album was built m- m- most of those songs are foundational to everything else like those were there and held the theme held the sentiment of the rest of the album before anything else did like a lot of a lot of the raps that are on the, the, the majority of the album before video a lot of them were written within the last year or so okay but video it was probably done over a year ago. Oh wow. So it like that that is why I think Smile is what it is. And that's why I had to put it on there. Mm-hmm. And it's like I don't know. But I had but it, but that's and that's also why it's one song. Because it's not done. I think that at some point in the future I'm going to revisit that. And like I I I don't even want to say I'd like to, but I think that regardless of what I want, I'm going to Because the the songs are cool. But you, you talking know, about revisiting uh, I, I, the songs on video and tweaking yeah, them and fin- yes. Okay, okay. I mean, like, because to me, that's lo-fi. That whole, everything on there was recorded on my fucking phone. Right. And produced and mixed on my fucking phone. Shouts out to Band Lab. Um, and they were exported as M4A files, and I had to convert them to WAV to get them to upload to any... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And like the, 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 but that, that's not what I was getting at. I wasn't out here for fidelity, and I, and I, I'm not. I, I don't want to say like what I'm saying is lo-fi, and it's not to avoid the, the title. More so, I just don't think any individuals can try and like. But that to me smells more like lo-fi than throwing an auto filter on your beat. Right. Yeah, I follow. <laughs> Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, uh, people don't really know how to use comments aside. lo-fi, yeah. But either way, yeah. yeah. Uh, I avoid getting into that conversation as much as possible. And, but like, I just think that lo-fi is not, uh, it shouldn't be a choice. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a slippery slope to go down. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. And though. if it is, it should be like a fucking accessory choice. Like, you give up hi-fi, 
in, in pursuit of something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, but going back to your band camp, earlier this year you released a, like a guided meditation, I think is what you called it on there. Um, yeah. How, how does meditation play into your own life and your creative process if it does it all? I don't, I don't, I don't fucking meditate. <laughs> you don't meditate? Yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah. No, I don't meditate at all. Actually, like I've, I've never gotten into it. Like I've tried so many times. Mm-hmm. Um, it's tough. That man. was, uh, yeah, I, it's funny. I was, I was talking about, um, needing calm in my life, my girlfriend and just like tranquility. And whatnot. Mm-hmm. And so next day, this dude, Aaron, who runs Brigade, it's a streetwear company out of New York City. Um, I'd probably be pissed if I called a streetwear company because he does a lot more than that. Like, yeah. I think that it's cool that, you know, it's not a street, it, it's like a lifestyle company, I guess we would call it. Uh, but but it, it, it comes from streetwear. Um, but he hit me up there doing meditation pillows and just like, just kind of like connected with self. Um, branch of philosophy through the spring summer job. Okay. And they want to do meditation videos that kind of like highlight the pillows, but also it, it access content. And if you're not paging the, the access, the, the access to the videos at all. But, um, and my friend John, who's close to Aaron, had suggested me for composing. Because John has heard a lot of my composition stuff okay. um, over the years. And I was like, damn, bro, I was just talking about how I need like more calm in my life. And then he used this uh, guided meditation mm. commission. Okay. And so, like, yeah, he, he, he dude was going to pay me for it and throw me some merch. And I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. Uh, I'm doing two more. Um, I think I'm actually about to work on one later today. Okay. But, um... Yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, meditation plays no part in my life. <laughs> <laughs> then, do you want to talk about um, Ten Penny and what it means to you to be a part of that? Yeah, I mean, like, it's funny. <laughs> um, I was working, so it all, it all kind of stems from my relationship with eyes. And, like, this, I love FaceTime, dude, because it allows you to kind of, like, it's the closest thing, you know? Yeah. They're actually being there with someone. Right. And it's like, dude, there's an a- Arizona, I'm pretty sure. And like, bruh, it's like, well, I might be moving to Las Vegas. You'd actually be close enough to visit. That'd be cool. Um, but, dude, uh, he bought like three beats off of me. And it's like, word to God, I remember, I don't believe in God, word to my mom. <laughs> um, I, I, I remember every single person I remember every single person who bought beats for me to this point. You know what I mean? Like, right. all y'all, they, they, those people mean the fucking world to me because it's like, I just try and do so many things and then I'm like, oh, I'm selling beats now too. I'm just like, damn, dog. Like, I, I, the, I, I had it, like, I have a beat page that I posted on. It has like 100 pockets. Like, nobody fucking knows about it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's like, I don't even care. You know what I mean? I'm just going to do it regardless. But, um, I just had, his his Instagram is knowledge of my death, mm-hmm. and so I didn't know him as eyes, but I knew memories blue. And I thought like I made a best album of the year list, and that was number one for me. What did you and, make? Like, it again? Uh, I made a best albums of the year list for last year, and memories blue was like my favorite album of the year. Okay, but he hit me up, and it was knowledge of my death, and I think the other name for it was Popeye, and I just like didn't put two and two together. And, um, but he bought three beats off of me. Okay. And then for, somehow on the internet, I seen it. And then I seen him post, um, about memories bleed. And I was like, wait a second. Dude, no, I was like, oh, hey, fuck. Yeah. And then, and then I was like, the, 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 and then it just all shifted. And then I've made like six more beats and I just sent them to him. And I was like, we're making an album now, my bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we, that's, and then. He's a good sport about it. He's like, yeah, bro, let's do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, and then he told me about, and like, I, I don't know how you could not know about Pepper at this point, but like, he's amazing. Um, I had known of Pepper, mm-hmm. legend. Um, I don't, I'm like, I had obviously heard of him through the production tip of that, but like, he kind of like 
virtually introduced me to Pepper. I had started a conversation with him. And then through the wire, I had heard about Tempo. And like, it, 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 it's funny because you have IMD. I, 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 I'm still like very connected with IMD. I used to like, um, like I do art. I, I'm like art, art. I do. I will art with our IMD. I do a lot of like graphic design with them. Like mm. a lot of video work with, with them and stuff like that. Um, and then I'm just like that's my that's my people. Jay Cinema, Sean May, Yana, uh, Soju, Roman, like the like people that I came up with. And um, IMD's tight. They they they're doing some really yeah. cool shit over there. Yeah. Them, Sorrows, uh, well, Apollo's heart. There's just a lot of uh. A lot of really cool 98 cream. There's a lot of really cool like groups out here that are just doing something. And it's good cool to think about how they all like kind of culminated through like online relationships. That's like what's really interesting yes, to me about yes. these collectives that you're talking about is that they were just yes. able to be and, like, I'm making shit. They're like, I'm making shit too. And then they just formed this like insane collective of just like all star vibes. Exactly. Artists. Yeah. Exactly. And and I think a lot of that plays into curation. And that's where like you have people like Pepper and Sean who are the curators for the group. Okay. Like, like, uh, uh, like, like, you know, the, like on the IMD tip, uh, Sean, Sean is like, uh, he's making the, the moves mm-hmm. and giving people the spotlight they deserve. And that's why it is what it is. And that, that's why it's lovely to see because it's like, he genuinely loves people mm-hmm. and what they're doing. And he's willing to put himself on the side to... Give someone else a spot. Yeah, and uh, I think it's great. I think like, and that's why I love rolling with him. Um, and then with Ten Penny, uh, it, it was just like, I, I musically, I felt myself resonating with like, like I would make beats and be like, that's an eyes type beat. Mm-hmm. Tempo would post a beat, and I just like be able to come up with some crazy drawings off of it, like. I'd be t- like, I go Super Saiyan, right. and like, I'd be like looking at my pen, like, who are you? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, where did you come from? And like, like it, it just happened with Pepper Beats, and like, then Metro, like one of the best lyricists of the time, and he like master of subtlety, the right. Dark Knight of the rap game. Fucking, he's the he's the fucking rapper that we don't deserve, but we got anyways. Yeah, you know I what I mean. He's he's like, he's insane, Metro man. He's got what was it? He's, bro, that fucking uh. The shit he did with Bart Berman last year, that was an unbelievable yeah. project. Bro, Double O Metro, the first discography I ever bought on fucking Bandcamp. That's my, that's my, that's my boy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I was just telling me about it. Pushed me on the dirt, and I'm like, oh and like, I, like, I, uh, interpolating another one where it's like, I feel like it's hard not to know about him if you're paying tap and tap and he's great. Yeah. He's um, it pushed me on the Uhuru. And I'm just like, am I forgetting anyone? I don't think so. Oh, BK. BK's cool. Right. He got added. When I got, when I got added, he's great, dude. Mm-hmm. He's mad young, too, and he just does this shit. Dude, and, and I, and, and I was telling me about all of it, and I'm like, looking at it, and the Eric Andre meme is going off in my head with the gates, and it's just like, let me in. And, yeah. And, I called Pepper, I was like, yo, we need to talk to him, honey, real quick. <laughs> and I was just like, like, he thought I meant as an artist. He was like, yeah, I mean, like, I was just, right, just said that. I was like, nah, bro. As a rapper, he's like, I didn't even know you rap. And I was like, boom. That's exactly what I needed to hear, bro. Exactly. That, yeah. that, that, I love that, bro, because it's like, uh, back on the, I don't do the thing. Uh, I'm not the thing that I do, you know what I mean? Yeah. I spend a lot of time rapping. Some people, then it's like I had known Pepper pretty well at this point. He had no idea that I read. It was great. It was great. Yeah. And um, so pretty much, ten penny word to them. I don't know where it would have left off, but um, yeah, like it, it just kind of happens through. Yeah, you were talking about how um, you started talking to Pepper Adams, and he didn't even know you rapped. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I just, like, kind of, like, bit for him a little bit. Um, we spoke, and then I ended up in the DM conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, since then, it's just been nothing but, like, unity. You know, like, everybody's very supportive of 
you turn on it, it's not in this like deep riding way. Like everybody's listening to everything that gets said. Everybody's like giving comments and feedback, and it's honest and it, it's like, and everyone's so good at what they do. Mm-hmm. And that that to me is like the way you were talk, you were talking about it being like coming from internet connectivity. It truly totally reminds me of the league in like the NBA mm-hmm. where it's like teams are forming out of people who are good enough to beat anyone at their high school at their college you know what I mean yeah, but yeah, only yeah. a certain pe- percent of people can make it to that and it's like that metaphor I think it exists truly in, in, in what's happening in hip hop right now and I think like things like flapper zombies and I I don't really like them, but like I think I think um down the receivers, the thing odd future. I mean uh NWA <laughs> public enemy. Um it goes back to the genesis of hip hop. You roll mob deep. Uh you know, like it, 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 it's a it's a unified thing, but how it exists in the internet is interesting. And I look at our future as being very prevalent in that. Yeah, but um, what's happening with like Solos, IMD, Ten Twenty? It just reminds me of the league, and like it's really cool to be a part of. It's just like like that. That that's my people, bro. Uh, when Dirt drops his album, it, like it's not going to look like a piece of shit, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it, it's like that 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 dude is amazing. Same with the hoodie. Everyone in there that's that, that, that's that's lyrical, metro, just like. Uh, I don't think there's denying how fucking great these people are. But, um, yeah, like, it was just, it's just like, it was so natural, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it, it just, cause, well, again, everyone, like, like in that same essence of the league, y- y'all know how to act. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's really, it's really sort of like beautiful what's happening, honestly. It's really neat. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's a, it's a new conversation. And I uh, it's just cool to be a part of it. No, yeah, exactly. And um, hmm. what was I going to ask? Um, oh, I was going to talk about because collaboration seems to be a huge part of what you do artistically, but also your life. So, um, and I think what's interesting about that is, to me, without collab, like if you have too big of an ego, then you will not collaborate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of in, yes. like it's it's that's a part of what we were talking about with the whole everyone meeting on the internet thing is that all these people came together and found each other, but they all didn't have too big an ego to take criticism and talk to each other like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean a certain amount of ego is necessary just to survive. That's where your survival instinct comes from. A hundred percent. Yeah, um, I agree. If you just like, if you don't think that like. And laying down in front of like highway traffic sounds like a good idea. Then I don't know. You you, you have an ego. Yeah, you're just seeking to preserve your life. And I mean, so a certain amount of ego is healthy, but when it's toxic, it's just I think a linchpin into a lot of what you have the potential to do in this life. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm sorry. What was your question? My fault. Um, I don't know. I, I think I was just making a comment. I don't really think it had a question, it had a question attached yeah, to it, honestly. Um, I think, so I think, oh, ego in terms of collaboration. Yeah. Um, I think the same thing that was, I was just saying with somebody, you just gotta be doing something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you're, if you're willing and, and, and if you're in a space that you should be staring, then it opens the door for collaboration to happen. And not every collaboration is good. Mm-hmm. Not every collaboration is gonna be like outstanding, but. It shouldn't be the last one. You know right. what I mean? Okay, I see what you mean. None of them should be the last one. Like, it, it, it's like I was talking about before with, like, elusive. It's like, you're opening the conversation. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? 